guys, this is V, Diamond in the Rough. How you doing today? If you're new to my channel, welcome, thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, if you're curious as to what I do on my channel, hmm, I diamond paint, which is what I'm doing here. I also uh, do resin work, so two kind epoxy resin and also uh, UV resin. And um, I do have some tips and tricks for diamond painting. And then I have what I'm going to do now, which is my first episode of my next travel story. There is two other travel stories that I have done. Uh, one is a trip to South Africa and one is a trip to Egypt. Um, this is to, well, we all sit and diamond paint and listen to uh, YouTube. Uh, and so yeah, I thought I'd bring another part of the world and share another part of the world that I've been to. Has some entertaining stories in it. Um, so yeah, what I'm working on right now, I will pop the picture in here. This is a lion cub. This is a custom, so this is my own picture and uh, it was created by Di Moon. It's 62 by 50 and if you like the picture it is actually available on Diamond Shop. I do get an artist commission on um, on the images. So which is really good, really good. So anybody that's interested in these you can get these from Diamond Shop. Uh, there is a series of three and I will put the link below. There is also, so this is the leopard there is what they call the lioness, it's actually the lion cub. And no, I'm not working on the lion cub, I'm working on the cheetah. No, I'm working on the leopard. Oh wow. <laughs> Lost track of what one I was working on until I do too many. Um, so this is a leopard that's sitting in the tree. Um, and yeah, if you are interested in any of these, have a look. So down to the story, onto this what I'm talking about. So this is actually the very first episode of the uh, my uh, Northern European cruise. Bit of background behind it. Um, yeah, it was interesting, interesting getting this done. So guys, I will say right here, um, hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. As you go along, you might find something you like. So give me a thumbs up. Oh, that's giving me a thumbs down. Um, but yeah, the the cruise that I did started at um, Copenhagen, went to Bergen, Anderson's, uh, and Lerwick. So Bergen and Anderson, which were in um, Norway, Lerwick, which was Scotland, Kosovon, which was the oh, Faroe, Faroe Islands. So sorry about Boris, he's going off today. Um, then went to Reykjavik, uh, which was in Iceland, and then came back to back down to Oslo, which was Norway, Helsingborg which was Sweden and then Copenhagen back in Denmark. So that was the route that was taken on the cruise. It was a 12 day cruise, 12, it was 12 day cruise. Um, so right now you'll get the story of how it came about. I was very fortunate. I did a good deed on um, well, what year was that? I've got to, got to find 2013. So there we go, quite a while ago. So um, I used to be a heavy, heavy smoker. 40 plus cigarettes a day. Um, which is a lot. It's a lot. But on Star Wars Day, on in 2013, so May the 4th, 
2013, I stopped smoking. I don't say quit, I stopped. I no longer was a smoker. There's a big difference between quitting and just stopping. Stopping is just not lighting up another cigarette. Um, and Star Wars days was very appropriate for that because, you know, I'd want a cigarette and it's like, nope, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> so that was a little um, mind jigger to stop me from you know, a reason to not have a cigarette. It worked really well. Uh, but what that then entailed was the ability to do what I did. So what I would normally put down for cigarettes, I was putting aside into a holiday fund. So this is how you get how you do your holidays. It's, you've got to, you do have to, you, do, well, you can pay cash or you can borrow. For me, I put money aside on a regular basis so that I can afford the holiday and I pay cash. Um, I will never borrow to go on holidays. Nope, not happening. A holiday is something you earn financially and from work. So, yeah. But I had the easy way. I didn't, when I stopped smoking, I put the money aside. Instead of putting it in the cigarettes, I put it aside. So I didn't notice any difference. Uh, so, yeah. So I put the money aside thinking, yep, yeah, one day I'll, I'll put enough money aside and I'll... Yeah, do a, I'll have a holiday. Don't know when, I'll just find a convenient time. Hang on. Rose, just checking to make sure I'm still here, that I haven't left the house or whatever. Um, so yeah, did a... way it came about. Um, mm. So I've been looking and looking and looking for this something to do. I wanted a holiday. I wanted a cruise. Um, couldn't make up my mind where I wanted, and I was just looking around. And I came across NCL food, NCL's website. So that's the Norwegian Cruise Line. Uh, came across one. So when I look for holidays, I have date ranges that I look for. My favourite date to holiday is actually in September. Uh, reason behind that is it's after we've done the ta my tax in July, hence <laughs> uh, more money, and it's also after I, I get paid bonus. So you know I've got all these things accumulating together to be able to afford um, spending money. So I've done, done well at work and company done well at work. Um, but yeah, we uh, I um found a holiday in September. Uh, it was oh, just under two thousand dollars for two people. I'd had the discussion, you know, I'd, I'd looked at it and I'd been talking to a friend of mine about it, and she's like, "It'll be her last opportunity to go away on holiday before she got married, so she was going to come." And then, um, so it looked like I was going. We we're going to share a cabin. I was only going to cost us, you know, nine hundred to a thousand dollars each for this way for the cabin. I always go. I I get seasick, so I tend not to go, take notice of balconies because <laughs> they don't help me. Uh, so I, what I do is I go for an interior stateroom guarantee. So I pay the least amount of the cheapest, cheapest room. Um, I mean, it's got a shower, it's got a bed, uh, TV. You know, when you look at what you need to go on holidays. Um, I don't need the fancy stuff. Uh, granted, if you've been listening to my other holiday that I did, there was um, to Egypt was five star deluxe, so a bit of difference. But um, yeah, she was going to come with me, so it would look like we're going to pay about nine hundred to a thousand dollars each for this room and just a couple of grand on flights. And yeah, so we went ahead and I looked right into it, got further down, and then um, she decided she wasn't going to come. A bit disappointing. But I already had my holiday leave booked, so I paid for the cabin. I bought the cabin, paid what they call a single supplement. So if you travel alone, most times you've got to pay a single supplement because 
you know, there's only one person consuming stuff. So therefore, if they actually gave that room to two people, they'd be spending more money on the ship. So you've got to pay to simple supplement. Uh, yeah. So, yep, book the flight or for, uh, book the um, cruise uh, as an interior guarantee. So I've got a room, got a cabin, no issue. Uh, booked it for myself only. Uh, and then booked my flights. And then I did uh, the planning and working out what I was going to do. Oh my gosh all the stuff that you can do when you're over there so back then get your guide wasn't big um, I think it was only very small so I the planning I had to worry about is uh, well the flight there I had to organize my own accommodation in Copenhagen and I flew in the day before the cruise so I looked at what else I could do in Copenhagen while I was there. Um, so that was my first lot of planning. And then I also had, uh, I've gone through the cruise itinerary for all the, all the, um, all the shore excursions. So I've gone through all of those and worked out what ones I wanted. I, every, I think I, I put kept putting money down on the cabin. So what you do when you go on a cruise, you have your cabin costs, uh, but then you also need to have extra cash to spend, i.e., for your shore excursions, um, anything you drink, anything you purchase on the ship. You need to make sure you have money aside for, and you tend to actually have to. Hang on, let's go. Where is it? Do I know what I'm looking for? <laughs> um, come on. 3371. Should know these colours by now. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, me. I turned around and did some massive. I put cash on, I put, so what you can do with cruises, you can do what's called gift cards, where you actually put money onto a cabin. So people can actually, uh, can actually, if you are going away and people want to give you, so if it's a wedding, instead of giving you a wedding gift, they put cash on your cabin on your honey, for your honeymoon type thing. I did that to myself, so I kept putting cash on my cab, on my cabin, so that then, any spending I did, I was covered. You know, I had it was not not a uh, such a harsh hit. Um, I booked and paid all my shore excursions um, at the planning while I was planning all the planning of where I was going to go, all the stops. Um, and I had one day where I didn't book any shore excursions. Let's get the word right. Um, and I had a choice, uh, that was in Iceland in Reykjavik. I um, didn't book anything through the through the cruise line. I actually booked by Get Your Guide, but I was tossing up on a few different things. So one was um, horse riding. One was just a day at the uh, Blue Lagoon. Is it Blue Lagoon? I don't know what it's called. Hang on. Um, why do I think it's called Blue Lagoon? It's not the Blue Lagoon. It's. Oh, I might have been. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Ah, I'll, I'll, when I get to that part of the conversation, or part of those rooms, I'll get get, get to that day and I'll get it right. Uh, and, yeah. So, and there was the. Um, Diving, scuba diving at um, on the fishes. So you're actually at the uh, continental plates, and and the water is heated up by the thermal activity. And yeah, uh, I ended up going with the horse riding. <laughs> yeah, I do like to ride horses. 
I don't do it much. And I'm very, very, very rusty at it when I do get off. Um, but yeah, so basically I ended up with putting at least a thousand dollars cash on my room. I think I put two thousand, ended up putting two thousand cash on my because I was a smoker for so long, you know, I and I, I'd stopped, it was September, so I had May, June, July, August, September, well, four and a half months of not smoking, where I was spending more than $100 a week on cigarettes. So I put the cash on the room and uh, booked that tour. I booked my room in Co my, where I stayed in Copenhagen, which was the palace in Copenhagen. Um, what else? Ah, then I had to research what to do in. Whoops! My Netflix has come on. Hang on. That's what happens. Okay. Um. Sorry, guys. So yeah, then I uh, had to look at what to do at Copenhagen now. One of the things that I decided, one of the things I had to do was um, I had to eat a Danish in Denmark. You know, it's just irony of stupid things, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, what else did I do? I had, so I, I found, you know, I looked around at different places to eat, um, think, different tours to do. And one of the things I discovered was there was a Copenhagen card which you, could purchase I paid 50 euro for that 50 euro per Copenhagen card so if you can imagine what 50 euro was worth how much that would buy you eight years ago seven eight years ago um, so yeah I've got a Copenhagen card and that gave me access to quite a few things uh, it gave me the train the ability to use the train it could it incorporated the cost of train. It was also uh, quite a few of the places to visit. Uh, it gave you, you know, was it the you could you show this card and you got entry into it. It was really really good, great tourism tool. So you know, I ordered that, had that sent to me. Eight euros to have it sent to me. How's that? 42 euros for the ticket, 8 euros to have it sent to me. Uh, I wasn't uh, savvy with the electronic means of communications at that point, so yeah, I like to have it in my hand. Uh, so yeah, that was that was all the planning that got to, um, and I will say all the planning was done in. I think about three weeks. By the time my friend had decided that she wasn't going to go, I had three weeks left to book the cruise, book the flights, and do everything else. Which is pretty, well, for a whole day, it's pretty quick, but you don't stew over much when you book like that. <laughs> oh, it won't be the first time I've done that. Um, yeah. So. The actual planning stage, I love the planning stage. Um, I hate the anti I hate the waiting to get there because I'm an impatient person. You know, once you've planned something and you've paid for everything, it's like you want to go, you just want to go. Uh, yeah. So, what was it? What date was it? I started. Nineteenth, eighteenth. Okay, so the eighteenth of September, twenty thirteen. Um, I actually left on the seventeenth. So I left on the seventeenth, and it was a flight from Perth to Dubai, eleven-hour flight, and then. Dubai to Copenhagen. I can't remember how long the Copenhagen flight took. But um, so I left in the night, as you do, 11 hours, get to Dubai, go from Dubai to 
Perth, uh, Dubai to Copenhagen. Now, that was before I found out all about airport lounges. So, yeah, I uh, learned a lot about airport lounges not since then. So, all of the travel there, I didn't have the lounges. I was a bit disappointed now that I didn't know about it. Would have made a great trip. Would have just added to it. Um, but didn't have it. So yeah, we go. Oops, I've got one more down in the corner. Let's see if I can slide it in underneath the plastic. Yep. Okay. So, time came to go. Can't remember much about that. I think Nathan just took me to the airport. We sat down and had a, a meal at the airport. Um, being... Perth International Airport, there's, it's pretty, at that time there was not much there to see at the airport going in. You just find this little spot to have something to eat and, uh, and then you go through the security screening and all that. Um, I didn't say goodbye to Nathan and cheerfully went on my way. The trip from, the flight from Perth to Copenhagen was uneventful so I was getting on the flight to Copenhagen but I will say I will show this picture I have this picture when I flew from <laughs> from Dubai to Copenhagen that flight I had a whole row of three seats to myself I alcohol was included in the flight so, you know, I had the free booze. <laughs> Not that I was a big drinker, but I had a very, very, very relaxing flight. Got into Copenhagen and it was raining. And it's my first time of being, well, not time, first time being overseas, um, but the first time of being in a place where it's like, I decided that you know to get to where I wanted to go I didn't go with um, I wasn't going to catch a taxi I was just going to go by the trains I was going to use a Copenhagen card and I thought oh you're very independent of me and bugger. so I was stuck Hang on, my eyes are playing tricks on me here. There we go. Um, I was stuck at this airport and there's this train at the train station and I'm looking at it going, oh crap, which one do I get on? I can't remember which one I get on. Um, I didn't write down which station I needed to get on to travel to um, the middle of Copenhagen. So it was like, I was like, oh shit, I'm stuck. And then I heard some other people talking and they're talking English. Um, and I've actually gone up to them and gone, oh, excuse me, <laughs> um, you're heading into Copenhagen? And they're going, yeah, we're um, just got to get the train. And they turned around and they said, they said which train they were getting on. And I went, oh, well, that's, that must be the train that I should be on. And so I tagged along. They were heading for the cruise. They were actually going to do the cruise as well. And they were from South Australia. So it was good to, you know, fellow Aussie. Always good to bump into a fellow Aussie when you travel. Apparently it's pretty easy to do. Uh, <laughs> um, so I turned around and yeah, said, I'll, I'll join you. If that's the right train, you know which train it is, I'll catch that one as well. And yeah, we had a bit of a chat on the train into Copenhagen. Um, mm. But it was a miserable day. It was raining. It was, it was, it was drizzling. So uh, it's for someone from where I'm from, which is a pretty dry place near Drizzle is quite a uh, interesting topic to talk about, but yeah. Uh, it's, we got into 
Copenhagen Station. Um, we got to Copenhagen Station there, yeah, and they turned around and said, "This is the station for you. We're actually stopping. We get off at the next station. Our accommodation is off at the next station." So I okay, I trusted them blindly. I think the scotch I drank on the flight was enough to kind of yeah, I was a bit fuzzled in the head. But I got off. Um, I've come up the train station. And this is where it hit me that I remembered where I needed to go for my accommodation. Oh, gosh. You know, when you look at it, when I look back at it, I, I sometimes think when I travel, go back and think about it, it's like, how the hell did I get away with what I did? Um, but, yeah, I, I did turn around and I come up from the train station and one of the reasons why I picked the place that I was going to uh, that I stayed at was because it was near the train station. I, I knew that if I got off at the train, I'd be able to find this place. And I found the place. I came out of the train station, got up the top, and just looked around, and there was um, where I stayed. So the palace, I will pop some pictures in here of the palace. And oh my gosh, the size of the bed size the bed uh, so I shot, pop some pictures in here of um, the, pa the palace hotel it was in the process of being was it in the process of being renovated or everywhere around it was being re renovated everywhere was getting renovated no the, the road was getting renovated um, there's lots of lots of work was happening on around there, um, but yeah, the palace. Without realizing where I had gone, it wasn't until afterwards I realized where I was. Um, on my yeah day two, I realized other attractions, but I had brought. So I checked in, gone up to my room got myself settled and then it was like okay well I'm still wired I don't want to sleep I'm still wired from the flight uh, so I shall go and have a walk around and see what I can do across the I suppose mall I don't know across from the the palace hotel was um, there was an open area and then there was Trivoli Gardens. So I decided that I was going to go to Trivoli Gardens. So part of my plan was Trivoli Gardens in the afternoon and I was going to do a canal cruise the next day, um, all fitting into time-wise. So I went to Trivoli Gardens and it was raining. Um, but I've come out, come out of the hotel, seen it was raining, so it was still right, still drizzling, and then it's like, well, I need to get an umbrella. I don't have an umbrella. I need to get one. Uh, silly thing. I'm going to a place that's cold. You sh I should have expected it, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the silly things we do. Uh, so I found. I actually found right on the corner was a Seven Eleven. Um, and. It's really funny. I've gone to the 7-Eleven for, um, uh, I found an umbrella and I found some coats. You get me and coats, best friends. Uh, and I can't recall what I pray, paid for it, but I thought, Jesus, that's, that's pricey. Now, this is in, didn't pay in euros. Did I? It wasn't in euros. Don't know. It was in the Danish... Danish currency, I think. Or was it wasn't. Was it euros? No, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we. I, I got a uh, coke and umbrella, and then proceeded to uh, Tripoli Gardens, which is um, beautiful gardens. It's also a, um, a an amusement park. So there's all these rides and stuff that you can go on. Um, Unfortunately, because it was so wet 
I couldn't really do much in the way of getting on the rides because it was all wet. It's a bit disappointed on that. But it was still a beautiful thing to do. It was really enjoyable. Pop some pictures in here so you can uh, have a look of uh, Tivoli. I think I did some video footage. I did some slow motion footage. You see where there's paces are, there's sections of the gardens have been uh, just barricaded off, I'd say, because there was just too much water. Um, but yeah, there's some nice little pictures in there. Um, band playing, you can see how wet it is, and it's just everything is, it's not, at some points it wasn't raining, at some points it was, but just everything was washed down. Um, I did find a fountain, a chocolate fountain, with a, a store that had a chocolate fountain for um, dark chocolate, brown, dairy chocolate, and then white chocolate, which I was really impressed with. feed there. Didn't do any of the rides although they were quite good. I wanted to. Too wet. 
But yeah, so then I wandered from there, wandered around to the guards. I could have gone back there the next day if I wanted to. Um, but I wandered around Tivoli Gardens for a bit, and then what number are we working on now? One, <clears throat> and then I turned around and wandered um, the mall. Okay, so they have the longest mall. Is it a mall or? Um, um, no, I can't recall them all. Cannot recall them all. His name, Bugger. but I think it's the longest or the oldest mall in the in in Europe or something. You know where there's it's a basically it's a street, but no cars are allowed to go down it, and it's it is big. It is big. Um, I'll show you some pictures. I just walked around the mall. There was a, oh, there was a Lego store. There was a Lego store, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Don't see that stuff here. Um, and then I found <laughs> a shop on the corner, um, oh, which, I, which um, sold Danishes. So I just took pictures of those because I wasn't having a Danish. Uh, and then it was a case of decided, well, it was late enough that I needed, it's late enough to think that right here, if I have dinner, I'll be able to go and have dinner and after dinner go back to my room and I'll have a bit of a, I'll be out of sleep and I'll be back, I'll be in that time zone. It's really funny, if I fly from east to west, I don't get jet lag, it's really good. Uh, Yeah, I found I found a bar that was just around the corner from where I was staying. And this bar it wasn't very big. It's not it's not like Australian pub. So it was a pub, but it's not like an Australian pub. It, there was not that many people in it. it had um Oh that's a crooked lazy. Um had a couple of people in it. I sat down and or ordered uh, dinner. But then I sat, when I sat down, I looked at the menu, and some of it I recognised, some of it I didn't. Uh, but the one that got me, because I'm a big steaky eater, I love my steak. I got there with the um, menu and I found it was a it was a, an Aussie steak. So basically, it was a steak with um, prawns and crumbed calamari, crumbed squidly, squid, squid rings, squidly. I <laughs> yeah, can't even say that right. Uh, squid rings. So it was really. I think the only thing that made it Aussie was the fact that it had the prawns on it. That's my only thought. So yeah, I've eaten that and I've gone back to my room, uh, had my alarm set. I didn't request a wake up call, I just had my alarm set. And um, now I had my shower and went to bed. Now that was, so I'd just done, I think I'd slept a bit on the flight from Perth to Dubai. The flight from Dubai to Copenhagen, I didn't sleep. But so that was from I'd gone twenty four about thirty six hours without sleep at that stage. So it's quite an interesting interesting thing to travel for so long, not sleep and still be buzzing. Uh, it's you know well I I slept on the I slept a bit on the Dubai flight. But I never sleep well on planes. Yeah. Especially not when I'm flying alone. It's even less when I'm flying with Nathan, because when Nathan falls asleep, I'm playing the snooze. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we kind of had a sleep, got up in the morning, I packed my bags up, and I recall that 
the hotel offered a luggage service where they would hold on to your luggage or look after your luggage while before you go anywhere so you can check out and leave your bags with them and they would um, look after them for you until you're ready to pick them up so I left my bags with with them and went for another walk around the city I did the I came across a jean store I think it was a jean store I don't know whether it was jeans west or something like that Trees, yeah. Um, it was something like that, a jeans store. But yeah, I was fascinated by their mannequins because, well, here, have a look at their mannequins. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> putting a bag over your head, really, I thought that was really well done. It doesn't matter what you look like. This is what you look like in jeans, yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked it. I liked it. It's just something that... Uh, I thought it was really cool. Excuse me. Yeah, it's something I thought was really cool. Right, let's start working our way along the colours. Um, so I took a fair walk around the place and got to the canals to where you get on. So the canals, part of the Copenhagen... Um, card was being able to go in the canals if you got on that one of the one section you had to pay extra if you got on where I got on it was part of getting on obviously it was the start of the tour so I got there and I didn't realize how early it was you know did not realize how early it was so I had to sit around a bit but instead of sitting around I went for just I just wandered the city Kept an eye on the time, kept an eye on where I had to go. And in the end I ended up when I had uh oh, there we go. I ended up walking around the mall and I found this place that was just outside was it? No. No. I found where I wanted to go for so with all my research I found one place where I wanted to go. I found the because when I'd done some research, there was one place I wanted to go to sit down and have a coffee or a Danish. Um, but I located where that was, uh, but uh, you know what that wasn't open. So I've gone back to where the canal tour was, which was open when that the, the canals were just about ready to start their tours by that time. Um, went and did the canal tour. Oh wow, that's such a pretty thing to do. I'll actually not talk. I'll, I'll actually um, give you just things to look at that were part of the tour. Anyway. So I'll just scroll through some of the places I can't remember that I saw that he was telling us about. So um, I'll just scroll through so you can see the pictures uh, and just enjoy the view that I had that I still can't remember what I saw. I will say that I saw the palace. I saw uh, Norma's. Um, and what else did I see? Uh, the, the back, <laughs> not being rude, but the back side of the Little Mermaid. So yeah, hopefully you will enjoy that bit.
was over. So it was like, well, now I'll go walk the mall and get to that place that I'd found that I wanted to have my Danish in. So it was quite a pretty little place. Um, I'll show you the the opening. You can see the opening just with the the red. Where you can see a guy there and somebody next to him with a red shirt, and then there's a red door. So that was the opening, and then you walk in through this walkway into this beautiful little area, and the cafe was absolutely stunning. It had had the chandelier in it. It was just so pretty, so pretty. As you walk in, so there's no birds in the area, but as you walk in, you hear these birds chirping. Uh, it was actually, um, you know how you get that on, it was on a sensor, so you know, when somebody walks in, this bird just chirps away. It's not just one bird though, it's just a cacophony of a few little small birds but it's quite sweet because when you walk in you hear these birds and you're looking around to see where they are and then suddenly you spot the speaker <laughs> and it's like there they are <laughs> okay <clears throat> what am I, doing? I want to get these ones out out so these um yeah but this little cafe had the chandeliers in there none of the teacups none of the teacups matched so which is really funny you normally you go into somewhere um and you would expect everything to match you know but these didn't match but they were beautiful cups i ended up with an absolutely stunning stunning one um there's a picture i took a picture uh, i've taken my glasses off taken a picture of my cup which actually was, I had a cappuccino, so it wasn't a tea, it was a cappuccino and a teacup. It was a fair size cup, but yeah, it was still good, it was good. Uh, and then the Danish, so, you know, gotta have, got, I took a picture of me, have, I took a photo of a Danish in a Danish shop. <laughs> yeah. Sense of humour for me. Yeah, no, I'm nuts, I'm wet. 642. So from there, I came across the the rotunda. I think it's called. It's just a round building. I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure what it was, but I didn't stop because of the building. I stopped because there was actually fire is there. Something had happened and had been called. Um, Obviously, nothing really had happened. Hang on. No more U-turns. Nothing had happened, but, yeah, it was pretty interesting to see these fireys, so I just stopped because the fireys were there. Um, yeah, just walked around a bit more. Didn't do that much from then. Ended up back at the uh, Palace Hotel. 306. Oh. Back at the Palace Hotel, grabbed my bags, and then I turned around and said to reception, I said, um, how much would I expect to pay? So one of the things you can do with hotels, you say, oh, this is where I'm going, how much would I expect to pay to go? Um, so I actually turned around and said, I need to get a taxi from the ho from here to the cruise, um, cruise terminal. How much, am I, how much is a reasonable place, price to pay? And they turned around, and they were absolutely brilliant. They turned around and said, there is a flat fee from here to the cruise, so you don't need to go looking for a taxi to take you. Taxi is right out there. They will charge you this amount, amount of money, and um, you will, they will give that, that is the best price you will get. So I don't know whether they get part of the deal with that, but it was really good to have... A taxi right there, not have to chase it, um, and have them you know, say, you know, this, you know, it is a set fee to go to the cruise terminal, which is fantastic. Um, I'm after, I'm after. That's the G. Where's the G? 
3860. 3860, this is G, yeah. Um, so yeah, I got this taxi and off to the cruise terminal. Um, now cruise terminals are nothing. It's, some cruise terminals are nothing to look at. Some cruise terminals are just there. They're actually, well, they are all ports, but it's just a port that the cruises, cruise lines just use. It's not set up as a specific ter terminal for cruising. Uh, but tell you what, when I got to this one, I'm like, there was no, I did have to walk a fair distance. You had to get dropped off at a certain point and the taxi couldn't take you any further dropped off and then you just walk and carry travel drag your bags along with you to this terminal um it's not like other cruise terminals that they drop you off and you know exactly where you're going you know because you're at the terminal the doors it's all set up for specifically for cruisers um hang on just see making sure i've got the last one of that yeah uh, six, nine, eight, four, oh. I'll do my nine first. Uh, so, did the got in line and worked out where I had to go? And yeah, that was an interesting process. The that's not that's six. I wanted the G. Oh no, that is the G. That's that one. Uh, it's this one, that's all. Uh, get back here. So you've yeah, gone through, put your baggies where you need to do and all of that. Yeah. Got to check in, got to a check in point. And like, the last cruise I'd done only had 600 people on board. This one had more than 2,000. I'm like, oh, wow, look at all the people. <laughs> uh, I like my quiet time. <laughs> That's just all those people. Oh, boy, this is going to be busy. Um, Well-managed, ca organised chaos is the best way to put that, that, that it was. It was really good. Hang on, now I'm after the six. Pause for the six. Never find there we go. Four twenty. Um. So I finally got to check in camera. Now the uh, standard thing you do when you check into a cruise is you've got to give them your credit card. They put a freeze on a certain amount. They put a freeze on. I think it's a thousand. The phrase about a thousand on your card to make sure that you'll cover the expenses of uh, what you spend on the cruise. Hang on, 3772. And um, the guys turned around and said, oh, I need your credit card. And I turned around and said, You don't need my credit card. And he turned around and he goes, We do need your credit card because we need to put it against your room so that any charges they go against. Now we can recoup from your credit card. And I've turned around and I said to him, you don't need my credit card. And he's looked at me. And I said, have a look at my room and look at my room balance, please. And he's looked, <laughs> he's looked at my room balance <laughs> and gone, yeah, no, we don't need your credit card. <laughs> I had actually put, it's nearly, I had actually put, um, I think, about two thousand dollars worth of spending credit on on my room, and all my ashore excursions would already paid for. So you know, I was just, yeah, yeah. The guys just gone. Yeah, we don't need your credit card. But okay, now I understand why you're saying I don't need it. Um, so you didn't get my credit card details. I, I. Because I'd put so much on the room, I didn't have to give them the card details. I didn't want them to freeze another $1,000 off my card 
just in case I went over what I had already kind of allocated. I already had an idea of how much I was going to spend and my short excursions were already covered. So yeah, one of the biggest recommendations I would do, put room credit on your room 938. Uh, so yeah, got to, uh, I checked in, my bags were taken, obviously it's all in their process of taking bags, whatever. I didn't have to, I didn't see him again until later on in my cabin, uh, 3041. But at the point of checking into the cruise, um, you know, I got to my room and there was no baggage. So all I've done is basically I've dropped, I've gone into my room, all of my gift cards were there, okay. So for all my short excursions that I've pre-booked, the cards were there, all the tickets were there. So everything that I paid for was all on these allocated tickets. Um, and so I made sure everything that was there, or made sure all my credits were accounted for, uh, that's the biggest thing is obviously when you're spending money and you're putting money on stuff and it's all online you want to make sure that everything is there so it was it was really good uh, pop them in the safe pop my passport in the safe um, oh, what happened there Hang on. I've got something stuck in my drill pen. Um, and from there, it was like, okay, now I'm going to go and explore the ship. Um, I had booked some beauty treatments at the spa. So that was my first point of call, was the go to the spa so that I could check it out. And I knew where I was going. Um, to, and also to make sure I was booked in, had my times booked in for when I was going to get these treatments done, um, when I was going to get my appointments filled. So like, yeah, like you can book in, you can pre-book like for massages and stuff like that. It's really good, really cool to do. And what they do offer, what they did offer with this cruise, geez, I can do this an hour. What they did offer with this cruise is um, some cruises you buy online pre-packaged stuff which is a good move to do. But there's other things you buy on the ship. So I actually got there and paid for unlimited access to the spa, 839. So what that meant is 24 seven, I could go into the spa area, which is where they have the heated indoor pool. They have a hot tub. Yes, there's hot tubs out on deck, but this is a hot tub in a um, secluded area. Um, uh, so I booked, I booked that for the for the whole cruise. You know, for twelve days, I've got unlimited access, so I could go in there any time I wanted. Nine, three, four, which is a, an absolute blessing. I can tell you that much, especially when you're going into cold climates. Um, so this is a heated area, heated spa. When you're getting in and out of the spa or the swimming pool, the actual air is heated as well. So it's not like you're exposed in the open. And the swimming pools at night time get closed after a certain amount of time, whereas in the spa, they don't. So you know, it, it's brilliant for that. Um, yeah, so I've booked my, I've booked my, my entry into the 24-7 entry into the spa, I've gone up and looked at the uh, gym, yep, yeah. <laughs> I'm not booking into that, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> six, four, eight, I'll get this section done and then we'll finish the chat. Um, then I've walked around and I've booked, found, gone to the bars in the main lobby area, and you can see people piling up 
Absolutely, 8740. I've already done that one. Hang on. Um, you see people lining up at the the um, shore excursion desk, and you know, and I'm like, I'm sitting back looking at them, going, "You had it done online. You wouldn't be want. You wouldn't be doing this." Um, you know how good it is to be able to sit back and go, "Yep, I can now relax. I don't have to worry about." squeezing into that line and hoping I'm going to get served or worried that my tour is going to be booked out. Um, it's the way to do it. 611. And yeah, so I booked in the, on the cruise, they give you this, there is, there's buffet eating, so or whatever it is, whatever they call it, where you can, you know, you go in and get breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, and it's all basically self-service. They have specialty restaurants as well. I had booked um, my first night at one of the specialty restaurants. And let's see if I can find it. Um, I'd booked into the where steak warehouse. And... I had ribeye on the bone with um, I think it was just a bernay sauce but I'd gone this beautiful steak so I'd gone into the specialty restaurant had my steak no I didn't pick a picture of it um, and the chef comes out because it's not a big restaurant uh, the chef comes out and he talks to everybody that has ordered and his turn around come to me and said, how, how was the steak? And I said, I want to take you and the cow home. That was yum. <laughs> Beautiful steak. Um, and, yeah, so that was um, my first, that was getting there and uh, my first, um, first meal on the ship. Um, I will leave this here. The recording's for more than an hour, so you should have been entertained for quite a while there. Um, including the pictures i will pop in i should have popped in somewhere along the line where i'm talking about the cruise line the my cabin pictures um but hopefully you've all enjoyed those and um stay tuned for my next um my next episode uh which is a bergen and Elisund, which is norway um, I'll see. A one, I don't know whether I'll be able to go one day or two days in one recording. We'll see what happens when I go through it because I can remember so much this trip. Uh, give me your comments. Has anybody done a cruise? Did you do all the pre booking or the post booking? Did you have to line up at the desk for sure excursions? Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, hit the subscribe. And uh, obviously hit that bell to be uploaded, to be uploaded, to be notified of any more uh, uploads that uh, happen. And I will say uh, bye for now.